Join us, friends. Great Scott, small guy. Do they know what we have in store for them? They will if they tighten up. And don't double dribble. To the Grey Ghost, small guy? Exactly, old chum. No time to waste. To the Grey Ghost. We have not a minute to spare. It's showtime, friends. All right, all right, all right. Trey, it is the spa guy, and it is... Glow trotting with Trey. And we are not wishing Cotton was a monkey. But I tell you what, I am wishing that Agent Elvis was never made. This cartoon is a complete disaster. Trey, it could have been so cool. Spy Guy, man. It, you know, when I first saw it, I was like, yes, at least a cartoon looks like Elvis. Because that's what the movie didn't do. And then if you go and watch the first episode, you're like, no, no, unbelievable. Are you kidding me? They're putting Elvis in these situations. Elvis is in these scenes and that stuff is happening around him. Man, this is embarrassing to me as an Elvis fan, man. And, and doing these videos for this guy and this history of this guy. And now we don't only go through a fairy tale movie, go back and listen to our podcast on that. But now we've got this unbelievable nonsense. I can't, let me think of another word to use. Just vulgar cartoon starring Elvis called Agent Elvis that little kids will click on because they'll see Elvis. It's a cartoon. So what do kids watch, Trey? Cartoons. I watched cartoons right. when I was a kid. And they like to say that it's an adult cartoon. First, I'm an adult and there's nothing about this that appeals to me. In fact, the gratuitous cussing, the gratuitous murder and there's bestiality in this thing. And friends, if you have children, we're going to try to keep this as clean as we can, but there's things in here that we've got to talk about yeah. that are, I'm a Christian. Trey's a Christian. I'm a Christian. Yeah. There's things that, that grieve God and the gratuitous things that are in this, this could have been a cool thing that you could watch with your family tell the actual story of Elvis. Somebody even compared it to the, to the Elvis movie. What did they say about that? Let me read this to you. This is from Robert Ebert.com. This is their official review of agent Elvis is not, it's called agent Elvis is not the king of animated comedy. And something stood out to, to me that I wanted to read to you guys. Let me pull it up for you. It says, it says, okay, due to Larman's animated style, we really got two Elvis cartoons within, within the past 12 months, if you think about it. So they're saying that the Elvis movie was a cartoon movie for Elvis as well. And at the very end, Robert Ebert.com says, says, despite the high octane, colorful, inspired stylization and delightful graphic action violence, Agent Elvis falls short in providing consecutive laughs. I back that up. And original spy ideas that quickly wear out their welcome. While a talented voice cast led by an energetic, all right, all right, all right, McConaughey attempts to uh, elevate the overall energy, they say it's not enough to give a solid rubbernecking recommendation. So they said, don't watch it. That's what RobertEbert.com is telling people today. And I only watched clips of it that you sent me. And I know you watched a, a few episodes I'm, so I'm, you would know exactly. I've watched three episodes so far, and Billy, I can't believe, I can't believe what I've seen, man. And I'm, I'm sitting there and thinking, like, oh my goodness, Elvis is right there standing in this scene. And can I talk about what, what I'm talking about? Because it's hard not yeah. to. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. And uh, right, friends, so, just make sure that you cover your kids' ears in some of this. Yeah. Okay, guys. Pause it if you know. All right. So here we go. So in episode two, Howard Hughes, the recluse Howard Hughes is depicted in this episode with Elvis and they're going to blow up. So, uh, somebody's going to blow up Las Vegas and Elvis has to save Las Vegas because, oh my goodness, Priscilla is still there. So, <laughs> so, so they're on the airplane spa guy and Howard Hughes gives the knowledge that they're all tied up. Of course, you know how, how it is. And the bad guys got the upper hand. Well, Howard Hughes gave the knowledge that a few years ago, his you-know-what was injected with this uh, special um, potent thing. And, it, it you know, it, it's some kind of uh, radioactive uh, energy or whatever. 
So they cut to a wide shot and Elvis's right hand man, which we learned in this episode is not Memphis Mafia yet. He's trying to get in. I think it was like, you know, maybe one of his cousins, maybe a cousin because they, yeah. they have a country accent and, you know, they're playing up all the, that country, uh, uh, portrayal, you know, the, but anyway, this guy, they, they were going to try to force Elvis to do this, Billy, what I'm about to tell y'all, but Elvis like, you know, Blah, blah, blah. No, man, you know, with all the profanity. So he makes the guy trying to get an Elvis Mafia take one for the team. And they cut to a wide shot. And guys, this guy in this cartoon with Elvis standing right there in the shot is down on his knees. And that's all you got to say. That's all I've got to <laughs> say. And yeah. this is in this cartoon, man. I'm thinking like. This is a cartoon. I don't want to see this, you know. I don't want to see this kind of stuff. And Elvis now is represented there. Or Elvis, he's standing there. Is that really where we've gotten as a society where this is what people want? Is this really where we're at now? You well, know, are is, we this wicked that this is this is an adult cartoon and this is where people want to go and what they want to see? Is that really where we're at now? I don't want to see this. I don't want to see this either. And I'm saying, and it gets even it's crazier, man. And the things, I mean, there's a there's a scene of of a girl in the back seat. You know, and you, uh, you know, we'll all know what's going on, and uh, you don't know With who's in the scene. A it's a chimp, it's Scatter the Monkey. So, bestiality is what you're saying, exactly. That's episode yeah. one. So, that's an, if yeah. you watch episode one, episode two, Elvis almost kills Runny Tut. Yeah, and they actually give a count. Let me uh, let me find this thing. It actually says that you hear more than 20. This is episode one, more than 20 uses of the F word, 15 uses of the S word, the Lord's name in vain 11 times. Mm -mm. And you it know, says Jesus's name is abused twice. And you, I mean, it, there's no, and that's it's, just, the, that's, that, there's way more than that, but that's just a few things that they say about that. And that's so they even episode. use Jesus's name in episode one. That's only one episode, Billy. I've watched three yeah. of them and I, I just cannot believe because, you know, they had to sign off on this and it just goes to show you let people that have no knowledge of Elvis Presley, nor care about Elvis Presley do stuff. They're the people that gets to do these projects. They're, they're the people that get to do movies on Elvis and they're the ones that get to do a cartoon version of Elvis. And this is what you get guys. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, there'll be two or three people be like, oh, you know, this was for the younger people. Well, I'm young and I'm just thinking like, I never laughed for real. I sat there and I never laughed, spy guy. You know, I, I think it was a comedy that was supposed to make me laugh and none of that stuff makes me laugh. Well, it used to, I, I will say this, when I was younger, I cussed some. When I was in the car business, I cussed. But you know why? Because everybody I was around cussed. But it's not something that I do today. I've, I've uh, gotten saved. I am a different person today than I was. And when you get the spirit of God in you, when you get Jesus in your heart, those things grieve. It's called grieving the Holy Spirit. So what has happened to me is I can be watching a movie and things will start coming on in a movie and all this language and stuff. And I'll look at Lori and I go, we can't watch this. Yeah. And it happens more often now than ever because there's just... Stuff just for no reason. It's just there. What do you watch now, Billy? Because there ain't nothing you can watch if uh, yeah, the language. There's so much that we can't watch. Um, it's just gratuitous. And what gratuitous means, friends, is there's no reasoning for it. It's just there to be there. They think they're being hit by by cussing. Like you can have a clean comedian. I know comedians that are really good at, at telling jokes and being uh, a comedian that are completely clean. And then you got the guys that are that want to go, um, what they call it, blue. Remember, Red Fox would do blue comedy. That's what they called it back in the day. But blue comedy is is just kind of a cheap way of, or a way of phoning it in, if you will. There's an, an easy way of, of, of being comedic, but it takes more work to do it without all these gratuitous things to try to dress it up. And I just don't understand intelligent people you needing to use those words in order to convey a thought. It just seems it's, it's not classy for one thing. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that Elvis wanted to be a classy person. Now, was he 100% classy? That's debatable, but he was with people that were. Linda Thompson would be uh, uh, an example. And I'll show you this. Uh, speaking of Linda Thompson, I posted this right here and on Instagram, and Linda Thompson liked my post. So Linda Thompson agrees with us. Yeah, and I now, put Linda, and I put Linda right there with Priscilla in Elvis's life. Of course. Those are the two women you think about. She was yeah. as as much of a part, if not more of a part of Elvis during a very pivotal part of Elvis's life. She was there during the uh the Aloha stuff. Yeah. She was there when Elvis's downfall started. You know, she was there during those times. Yeah. Hey, in I fact, if it wasn't for Linda Thompson, Elvis would probably not live to 1977. Right. And I can tell you one place she's not. She's not in the Elvis movie. And it's probably a good thing for Linda not to be in that fairy tale nonsense. Yeah. But it still has to hurt um, because she was there with Elvis for four and a half years. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was very much a part of Elvis's life during, like I say, a pivotal part of his life. So I just can't understand. Well, I mean, I can't understand it. Priscilla wants to pretend like she was a widow. And she wants to pretend like there were no other girls. And we know that there were uh, Ginger is portrayed in the movie for a split second. You see her in yeah. the stunts when it pulls up. They but don't say so her quick. name, but she's in it. It was so quick. I didn't remember that. But Linda's completely left out of it, period. Yeah. And uh, and I just think that's sad. But uh, let's get back to uh, Agent, Agent Elvis, A.E. Well, um, Red Fox, you brought up Red Fox. Red Fox is in episode three. Oh really? Yeah, he's it. He's in there and uh, takes uh, Elvis's. I don't know if it's if it's Elvis's maid uh, in the in the show or cartoon, but he he's out on a date with her. And you know, of course, there's some there's language left and right there, but yeah. it is red. Um, you know, and that's that's the sad part that we're uh, that we have here is they had an opportunity just like that film to do something good for Elvis, and I mean, because they're they're showing uh, Red Fox, they're showing uh, Runny Tut. They're showing, uh, they're, they're talking about Scotty and DJ Fontana. They're bringing all these real names up. But, you know, this is disgraceful to me, man. Like, you're putting these real people in these situations. I know it's a cartoon, but I don't want to see Elvis in a scene with a guy on his knees in the scene with him. You know, that's no. not, that's, that's BS. And I don't, you talk, y'all talking about Elvis shooting screens out, it'd be two guns at this one, you know? Yeah. And he did. You know, shoot, he does shoot Robert Goulet's uh, uh, face off about ten TVs in a cartoon too. And that's that really happened. He did shoot a TV because of Robert Goulet. But let's go back to, you know, I I love when people say, "Well, Elvis would be okay with this." Well, you know, I I would I would I would beg to differ. Let's look at the evidence. The evidence is you remember the scene uh, in is it is it Elvis on tour or Elvis is it, on tour? Elvis okay, so the Elvis on tour, they're crossing the bridge uh, in Jacksonville, Florida, right? Yeah, I just and did an episode he, of it. Okay, so he talks about, he says something about some of a sexual nature, yep. thinking that there's no microphones. And he even brings up, well, it's just cameras. There's no microphones. And they go, oh, no. And he goes, oh. Look up. He looks up. He knows oh, that that does see. not need to be something that's out there on screen. Right. So he was sensitive to it even then that that was not portraying the right image um, image for this person. Right. So now fast forward years and years and years and years and years later, he's passed away. Mm -hmm. I hope that he's with with the Lord. I hope he's with the Lord. What I don't want is God looking over there at him and going, going, Mr. Preston, come over here. Let me tell you what they're doing with your likeness now. Is this really what you left as a, as a, uh, 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 what, what's the word for it? A, um, is this the legacy that you left? The world. Is this really what you left? Do you approve of this? You know, and I'm not saying that that's a real truth. That's not biblical that something like that would happen. But I have to think that it would grieve the Holy Spirit that this person outside of his control because he's gone now is being portrayed in this way um, for entertainment. Yeah. 
you know, I can tell you this, don't portray me this way if I die. I know that I'm not worthy of somebody making a cartoon of me, but do not, I do not approve of this, Trey. So you're going to live a lot longer than me. I do not approve of, of me being used in this way. And I'm sure that if Elvis was here, that he would say something similar to that. Did Elvis cuss? Of course. Was Elvis a, a, a flawed human being? Elvis was a highly flawed human being. He was a very sinful person. I'm a highly flawed human being. I'm a very sinful person. That's that's part of us living under the age of grace. Without grace, none of us are going to make it. But this this thing that that this is somehow desirable. But you know what bothers me probably more than anything is that there's somebody in Hollywood that believes that this is desirable to people. That this is really what they want. Is this entertainment to anybody? I didn't laugh. I didn't laugh at all at anything of it. And here I am watching a, 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 a show called Agent Elvis because it's, Elvis is represented clear as day on it. And I don't even laugh at anything. And I'm just sitting there thinking like, what in the world is this is going on here? Like, why? What's the point? What's the point of this, Priscilla? <laughs> EPE? What, guys, what is the point of this? Y'all so, y'all so badly want to, to win this... New generation of Elvis fans, fans, but I mean, are y'all really thinking that they care about this stuff? Like, is yeah, do you think that that's going to win fans? That's not going to win anything. So, in my opinion, in my opinion, is this my opinion is they do not respect Elvis Presley and a real story and real, a real the, the, the stories that he really lived. That's not entertaining, entertaining enough to, to people in Hollywood that's making these projects. That's what I get a feeling for, because everything that they're putting Elvis in is just is craziness. You, the Elvis movie, this Elvis cartoon. So, Spy Guy, what is next for Elvis? What is next? Well, if it gonna, gets worse than this, I don't know. I mean, is it going to be Elvis porn now? Probably. I mean, <laughs> I mean you know, I, where does it saying, go from here? Yeah. The the depravity and perversity of this whole thing, or I don't think perversity is even a word, the depravity and perversion of this whole thing is just mind-blowing to me. I, I can't understand it. And the thing is, is Priscilla started trying to distance herself from both of these projects. So kind of tell us about that. And she was very much in these projects. So why she was trying to distance herself from them, I, I have no idea what that could even be about because she was very much a proponent. In Agent Elvis, her name is right there at the top. So, friends, we actually had a little situation where uh, we one uh, Trey's internet went down, so he had to bring it back up and come back in. So we're a little bit off of our, uh, uh, of our track of thought because we don't know where we were when it locked up. Uh, we can but, get back to somewhere, Billy. But we'll I'll, get back to it. That's right. Let me ask you a question. Where do you think uh, this this Agent Elvis ends up? Does it get go to season two? Is season one finished? What do you I, think? Somebody was saying something about season two that Elvis um, ends up with um, with Pris- something about Priscilla in it. Um, so. I don't know, but it also said something about Elvis dying in season one in, in episode 10. So maybe there's an Elvis clone. So I don't, I don't know what will happen, but it's just, it's also crazy. And Jesse Garen will show up. Yeah. Jesse Garen will show up next. So this is just an example. And look, I am not against Priscilla. I'm not. Uh, let me back up. I wasn't against Priscilla, but the things that are starting to come out and starting to happen are really making me second guess that. What is, what are your thoughts on that? My, th- you know, I, I, I like to give Priscilla the credit where she deserves the credit at, you know, I mean, Pr- Priscilla was the only woman that Elvis ever married and she is an ex as facts. Um, Priscilla, I believe went into business mode after Elvis's death because she wanted to make sure that, that she wasn't cut out of everything perhaps, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I'm, I don't know that, but just by uh, outsider looking in, 
to the situation and just be kind of really thinking about true things that happen in life. I believe that, you know, she, and she did good things, you know, Graceland and everything and stuff like that. I believe whatever's happening now in their life with the, with Lisa Marie dying, I believe it could be another thing with making sure you're not cut out and other stuff happen that you really don't want to happen. Um, I think she's, for this project to happen, someone talked her into it. Maybe Priscilla, her, her name is as a, as the creator of the show. We don't know though, what goes on. You don't guys know what goes on in the editing process. You don't know what goes on after projects are greenlit. So it looks like to us by watching, and if Priscilla ever watches this, it does look like that you created this, Priscilla, because they put your name, the first name under the credits as creator. It's you and an Eddie, someone. And the thing is, does I would like to know, Does did Priscilla have last say in everything? Was she able to get her way as far as this can't be in it, that can be in it? Is that a reality? Because there's an article saying that she had, she had the uh, say in it. So that's what we need to know. In reality, did Priscilla have the final say in the creation of this cartoon and the storylines? I just don't think she did. Just by what Priscilla has done over the years and protecting the Elvis name, it, this don't add up to past things, I guess is what I'm trying to say, Billy. Like, so that brings us back to the question that I asked you when it locked up. So this is where we were when it locked up. So this is a nice lead in. My question to you was that Priscilla was trying to distance herself from the movie, then tried to distance herself from this cartoon. Tell us about that. Yeah, I was there at Elvis Week 2021, uh, a conversations with Tom Brown, and she was scared to death about the movie because she had not been able to see a script. Boz Larman had promised her that she was going to see the script and he never delivered on that promise. Priscilla never saw the script. Boz made that film without doing what he gave her word he was going to do. Now Priscilla saw the film and saw how Boz painted her in my opinion, and I could be wrong, but Priscilla was painted in a very positive light in that Elvis movie. And I believe Elvis Presley was painted in a very unpositive light in that Elvis movie. That's fair. I mean, is that okay? Fair for me to say, yeah. Billy? That's fair. And Priscilla was okay with it was, you know, cause she, she looked good in it. All right. The cartoon Priscilla brought up. I remember she brought up stories and I reread, you know, somebody brought that up in an article yesterday. She brought up things to us about this Elvis cartoon that's in the uh, works. And she was like, no, Elvis would never say that. So she was having them change the writing because they had Elvis saying all kind of crazy stuff in this cartoon. So she was really concerned with this Elvis painting image that this cartoon was that what she was seeing and how I read up on our article was that, you know, they listened to Priscilla and cut out some things, but they made her agree to do things. So it was kind of like, okay, Priscilla, if we do this, we've got to be able to do this. And she probably in all reality, Billy, I believe that, that they, they, they were able to get their way somehow with her. But what you just said though, was that she was involved in the creative process, not maybe she was involved in it. So that means that she could have said yes, or she should, could have said no. Yeah. I can't believe that a 70 year old woman sat down and watched this cartoon and went, yep, I'm good with that. I can't believe that. You know, um, I, 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 I I wouldn't even subject my wife to that. I wouldn't even allow my wife to watch that. I wouldn't ask her to watch that with me because I know just from the little bit that I've seen about it, I don't want to subject myself to that. I turn the, the TV off a lot of times when there's things. There's things that, like I say, that grieve the Holy Spirit that's within you. And the Holy Spirit is grieved by this thing. And But, you know, the devil is getting his way in this Elvis history, the devil is trying to taint Elvis's legacy. And look, if I was Graceland, and what I'm talking about is if I was Authentic Brands, let's say, which Authentic Brands is actually who had to sign off on this, I believe. 
If I was authentic brands, I wouldn't have the name Elvis Presley within a million miles of drug use, especially monkeys using cocaine and all the things that are going on in this thing. And Elvis is in a cartoon with gratuitous drug use. They should be doing everything they could do to distance Elvis from drug use. I didn't think about that. You yeah, know, right. he, does. he snorts cocaine. Elvis leaves the suite and scatter does what Elvis told him not to do. And, and the next scene is just a perfect shot up under the table of him doing the act. So kids, you know, little eight, nine, 10 year olds that stumble on this on Netflix, they go see this stuff. And y'all think yeah. you adults that made this, that, that putting Elvis in this type of situations, y'all think this is cool. And look, I, I'll bring up another little tidbit and this is, this is on the subject, but off the subject. What's so funny is if you go to to Hollywood and you say what you just said, look, kids are going to stumble across this on Netflix. They're going to or on what is it on? It's on uh, Showtime, isn't it? Or HBO? Oh, it's Netflix. And so it's on Netflix. It's Netflix. Okay. Yes. okay. Kids are going to stumble across this on Netflix. You know what they're going to say? Well, it's up to you to make sure that your kids don't see it. Those same people are trying to keep people from hearing about Jesus. It's up to them to keep people from learning about Jesus, but it's up to us to keep our kids from hearing this stuff. You I had, see the, the folly in all of this? Wow, Billy, you know. I, the I had devil's in the middle of all of this. I mean, I had a text. This is confusing, and the Bible, and I'm sorry to stop you, for, but the Bible says that God is not the author of confusion. And you know what this is? This is confusion. If you watch this to someone that knows the history of Elvis and knows all of the other things, it's confusing. So what was your uh, uh, text that you got? I, I received a text message this morning from an Elvis fan of, of my show, and they said, burning Bibles, shooting Kennedy in the head, and Robert Goulet, God save us. Not to mention, well, I can't even read this part, but it says the warning on the Elvis cartoon is gore, language, nudity, smoking and violence just what the younger generation needs yeah and that's well, uh, hey, hey guys we're why, finished <laughs> we're all finished why are we promoting this stuff you know i don't know anybody that uh, you know let's talk about drinking and drug use and the things that you just named i can't name one person that went you know my life sucked everything in it was terrible and i started drinking and i started uh, doing drugs, and I started watching nasty cartoons and cussing, and my life got better. Can anybody say that that happened? Anybody? <laughs> That's not a thing. So there's no reason to feel. The Bible says, out of the abundance of, of your heart, the mouth speaks. So, so the things that are inside of you is what comes out of you. That is who you are. So these people that are creating this and trying to make this – be normalized in our society, that is out of the abundance of the heart. So it lets you know that the heart is dark. This is a dark cartoon. It's sinister. It's dangerous for our kids. And I know they were saying this stuff about Elvis in the 50s. I'll take Elvis shaking his hips in 1956 over this all day long. You know, he had to do this one show. I'm unbelievable. Yeah, that, so, so let's go back to that. Okay, and that judge in Jacksonville at the Florida Theater yeah, that you get ready to talk about. That judge, would the judge that made Elvis just do this and was in the audience, he would have a heart attack and die if he saw this. <laughs> this is nothing compared to that. Tell can us about imagine, that, Trey. Can you imagine, Billy, Elvis was threatened to be uh, taken away in jail if he moved his legs in a show to cause a riot with the girls. Not only that. Ed Sullivan, he's filmed here because of they didn't want it, the decency, the decency. Well, my goodness, guys, that's only been 66 years. And we're now to where cartoons now are having nudity. And that was cool. That's cool. Like, I, I don't care to see a, a, a cartoon in those situations. And the thing is, they're using Elvis's image. They're using his name. They're using his appearance because that cartoon looks. That's the only thing the cartoon has right. I love Matthew McConaughey. I'm one of his favorite. You know, I love his movies, but man, I, I'm seeing Elvis and I'm hearing McConaughey's voice. My mind don't even register that. Like my mind's all over the place. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make they sense. They think that Elvis's story is not good they, enough. Yeah. They have to bring 
stars in to get people to watch this stuff. Uh, an article said that they had to bring McConaughey in to get viewers. So that shows you they these people that may be, are able to because they get the funding and stuff. They're able to do these projects on Elvis. Boz Larman, the creators of this crazy cartoon, they don't know about Elvis. They don't know about his history. And the reason I can tell you that is the 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 presentation they give us. You, you can tell they don't know anything they're, they're doing to us. And the thing is, they're putting Elvis out there for everyone to view. Now he, there's a cartoon of Elvis and everybody will know it's not real, but the st still it's Elvis Presley on screen taking part in terrible such things, man. You can't, they can't have him cutting people's heads off and you know, the, the head flies at you and blood scats, you know, hits your TV screen. And, and then Elvis says GD at 5,000 times. Come on, man. I mean, you, you know, y'all can't do that. It is his image and likeness. And that image and likeness is owned by authentic brands, which means Authentic brands had to sign off on this. So where we find ourselves, Trey, I believe, and I'm sorry to step on you for just a second, but where we find ourselves is there's people at authentic brands in the decision making decision making process that don't believe that the Elvis story as it is is strong enough that they have to bring in other people. Guys, Elvis stood on his own. This is how long how long ago did Elvis die? 45 years, 40, 45, 46 years ago. And we're still talking about him. Mm -hmm. Elvis can stand on his own. And tell me the Elvis movie that Elvis uh, said GD in. Say that again, Billy, you broke up. Which movie that. did Elvis say GD in? Um, none. <laughs> you know why? Because it's not a decent thing to do. When did he drop the F bomb in a, in a movie? I never heard him uh, except this uh, fake Elvis movie but not real Elvis. Yeah. No, never. Yeah. But see, they tried to portray him as that because they think that that's what people want to see. They don't know their audience. I'll give you an, uh, an idea of somebody that didn't know their audience. You remember when uh, Cracker Barrel, okay? We're talking about Cracker Barrel. Yeah. <laughs> Cracker Barrel's audience is going to be church going people as for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. Would you agree with that? I agree. Yes. Okay. So they got mad with um, uh, uh, Phil Robinson, Duck Dynasty, because he had said some things that they didn't like. So they went into Cracker Barrel and pulled all the Duck Dynasty stuff out of Cracker Barrel. <laughs> so what do you think happened? There was all of the people that went to Cracker Barrel went, what are you doing? We support Phil Robinson and his thoughts. Are you crazy? Yeah, that's a, that is somebody that does not know their audience. Mm -hmm. Do you know that now that you can buy uh, liquor and beer at Cracker Barrel? I didn't realize that, Billy. Yeah, I, I'm not going to Cracker Barrel for liquor and beer. That's a family place, right? Yeah, yeah. It's because you know, like when I uh, as a kid, I liked to go to Cracker Barrel because they had Andy Griffith stuff in the in the show. Yeah. You know? That's a place that we went when we were traveling because generally the only time you saw one, they were on I forty. Or they were on I-95. Now they're everywhere. But back then it was a place where you you went by one going to the race in Charlotte or going to Carowinds or going to Florida yeah. to Disney World. You know, and but they've lost sight of their audience. Authentic brands, EPE, whoever it is, Priscilla, y'all have lost sight of your audience. 70-year-old Elvis people, 60-year-old Elvis people, 50-year-old Elvis people, 40-year-old Elvis people. 30-year-old Elvis people don't want to hear Elvis dropping the F-bomb or saying GD every other word. Yeah, so my question is, how many of these uh, uh, teenagers and 20-year-olds Elvis fans are going to be spending money at uh, EP? The no. bottom line is this. If Elvis fans decide, you know what, EP? Okay, y'all take Elvis in that direction. We'll take Elvis in this direction. We won't support you. We'll stop showing yeah. up at Graceland. We'll stop going and doing your tours when you you raise the prices every five minutes on us. We'll stop showing up to Elvis Week and doing that. We'll just start our own stuff and bring it back how it used to be. I mean, that's what, you know, you know, I mean, that's what fans crave, you mm -hmm. know. So what happens, Billy, if if fans decided to um, make a point, you know, and the money stops coming in to, to, to EPE? This. That's the only way that we're going to get this thing cleaned up. And uh, it's, 
I can't believe we're even having to have this conversation. It's it. I this can. thing blows my mind well, that we have come this far. We've fallen this far. My question is, what is next? Y'all get ready. What is next? What are they, what is going to happen next with Elvis? Where is Elvis going to pop up next that y'all are going to be like, I can't believe I'm seeing this. You know, and here we are, me and you, we have a show about this guy every, every um, week about his history because we enjoy his real stories and his history. I find them fascinating. Man, I, I mean, if this cartoon would have just like been a comic book Elvis, that comic book hero that Elvis craved to be, and they just, you know, kind of like really went into his past and like just painted that man and told us stories and make it, a, you know, whatever made it a cartoonish, but really told us cool stories that everybody could watch and enjoy. I think, I think it would have been the same thing as a stupid, vulgar, over the top nonsense that's Agent Elvis. Elvis movies were all family friendly. I would have no issue with any Elvis movie sitting down with my grandkids outside of probably Elvis on tour. You know, there's a, there's a couple of things in there, but those were things that accidentally got in there. Elvis didn't want those things in there. So think about this. There's outtakes of Elvis. And when he's in a recording uh, studio and, and he's cussing and he's, he, he's losing track of his thing and he's just having a time and he's just cussing, cussing left and right. Elvis never, ever in a million years thought anybody was going to ever hear any of that because they sure. were outtakes. He didn't, that, that was not on his, that was nothing. TV goes out. That was not on his uh, contract that was going to be released. So Elvis cussed to the guys in the band. He made jokes. He made people laugh. He was cussing. He was using profanity in these things. Not in a million years did he ever think that you and I would ever hear or his fans would ever hear him saying that that's, kind of stuff. That's right. And we weren't supposed to hear those things. Scotty Moore told me that he was upset because as a studio player, they got paid for the master recording. They didn't okay. get paid for all that other stuff. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So the recordings that, that were not master recordings, he said, we didn't get compensated for any of that. We got paid for that one recording. So he felt slighted in that way. And that's, that just tells you that Elvis didn't think that any of those things would ever see the light of day and they were not supposed to, you know, like you said, that's behind the scenes. You know, when we're out there doing a show, you didn't have, uh, uh, Elvis with half naked women on the stage dancing and all this kind of stuff. He knew that it had to be family friendly. That he had an appearance that he had to keep up. Now, mm -hmm. how you want to live in your private life is different than how you want to live up there. You know, you could make arguments for Elvis's private life ever how you want to make the arguments. As I mentioned earlier, he was a very sinful man. But the things that he did in front of the camera were on point. They were set to be family friendly, they were set to be decent, to be good, and to be uh, uh, to showcase his talent. They he didn't go, you know, where we're at now is they don't believe that Elvis is good enough on his own to attract an audience. They think they've got to bring in all of this raunch to make Elvis reliable or make Elvis uh, uh, viable for today, and that's just not factual. Right. Elvis's story, as you mentioned, on its own, if you know the story, is fascinating. It's fascinating. You don't have to make up stuff. Guys, you don't have to make this stuff up or make Elvis, you know, like you say, all this vulgar, vulgar uh, profanity and, and put him in these sexual situations. Just tell the real story. Show the scene of him in two and a half mis minutes kissing 42 chicks on the lips. And that's all you need to do for young people. And the guys will be like, man, this guy was cool. That's what I did. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. And here I am today on a podcast. We're talking about the, the, the guy, you know, that's all they had to do. It wasn't anything else. That little thing made me a fan fan. I, you know, it just, it was fascinating. It was fascinating, but they, it has to be, I don't think we're off here, Billy. I think they don't think Elvis Presley um, can, can garner the interest of young people without doing nonsense. Yeah. I, I, I think that that is exactly what it is. And, and it's a shame. And I also want to bring up this. Every single podcast that we do is not going to be about Elvis. So if you are listening and you've listened this far, just know that we're trying to vary our subjects. And we're also varying our subjects when it comes to videos that we're doing. I have uh, started doing a different subject every week 
I do an Elvis video and then something else every week where I was doing two Elvis videos plus some other stuff. So I've stepped over into George Jones and, and Marilyn Monroe and James Dean and some other things because I want to get a wider audience. We found out by just focusing on the Elvis audience that um, it, it really limits us. Elvis fans, uh, I found in a lot of ways, and, and some of y'all may be uh, upset about what I'm going to tell you, but I find that Elvis fans are just not very nice people. They're, they're fickle. They, um, they're just, uh, our experience, my experience has not been good making Elvis videos. The overall experience is not what I expected at all. I thought that it was going to be fun. It was going to be uplifting. And these Elvis fans are trying to always take this to a dark place. Yeah. And unfortunately what I feel like, and because now don't get, get, get us wrong. Like There's a lot of really good um, fans that we have too. And like, I, yeah. I'm, I'm coming to learn their names and stuff. But the thing is like, what I think with this Elvis Hove thing is people all want to be, to feel like that they're important in this Elvis, whatever. I don't understand anything of it. I mean, Elvis has been going for 45 years, you know, guys, but it, it just seems like, well, like when you come along, Billy, you got popular with your shows because you did a really good job in the work and you brought us the stories back to life that had never been brought back to life. EPE didn't do it, but the spy guy did. You brought these stories back to life and I started watching them and thousands of other people. I mean, you were getting 50, 60, 70,000 views at one point on YouTube. It's when YouTube was different. And then because of you, about 10,000 other people have started doing Elvis YouTube videos, but they all still Elvis content. They don't do what you do. Okay. Yeah, or that's you. Be, do. That's being real, and I'm yeah. I'm just a, off of your, you know, doing your videos, and you taught me into that. But the bottom line is, Billy, you got popular and stuff, and there's certain people that can't take that, man, because it, it makes them feel like they're not as special to Elvis as you are. In my opinion, that's how it is, yeah. and I don't understand that nonsense. I use nonsense a lot because that's the only thing that I can think of. Everything to me is just nonsense, <laughs> but but. Uh, that's what my that's how I view it, uh, Billy. I don't know if you see it like that, yeah. but me looking well, in and seeing how people talk about you and write about you, all you are is a guy that that is a fan of Elvis. You know, they even say you're not a fan of Elvis. I mean, that makes me laugh my head off. If if this guy is not a fan of Elvis, why is he doing a video on Elvis every week when when we, when you're losing money? Yeah. You know, we're not Boz Lerman. Me to make these videos. We're not Boz Lerman or the creator of El Agent Elvis that's going to laugh their way to the bank right now on you fans. We're not those people, but we're going to continue yeah. doing our work. I can tell you that. That's right. And when these things are long forgotten, our stuff will still be there. And it may be the only true part of Elvis that's going to remain because you could see where EPE and Authentic Brands has taken him. So what? we may be the, the last bastion of truth. Who, who, Billy, who is in charge of, of Graceland now? Or who's the guy? What's his name? Um, uh, you got Joe, well, Joe, Joe Weinshaker. Remember there in January when Lisa talked for the last time? You he know said, what? In 10 years, we're not going to recognize the place. That's what he said. So I'm asking now, Elvis movie? Agent Elvis. Robert Ebert and them said that they're both cartoons. What's next for Elvis Presley? What is next, guys, that's going to pop up in the next year, year and a half, that's going to bring Elvis to young people, to this young generation? And we're, what are they going to paint Elvis as doing? What kind of scenes and situations does Elvis Presley, that's been dead for 45 years, is going to be doing? And what kind of story are they going to tell people? And look, we may be running over, but I want to go go to one more point. And we've actually gone over this in uh, one of the other podcasts. But I want to bring up one more thing. I remember when the Elvis movie, the idea of it popped up, you called me and said, hey, man, this may be really good for our channel. This new movie is going to come out. I'm scared of this this uh, director, though, this Boz Lerman guy. I'm scared of what where he may take this, but it could be really cool. Bring in a younger audience and it could set our YouTube channels on fire for people learning the history. So let me ask you, Trey. Um, I know my numbers. You on YouTube, guys, uh, for those of you that don't know, we can get on there and we can see the ages of the people that watch the videos, the amount of people. 
how many videos they watch. We can look at the whole thing. And I went back and looked at every one of my videos and I looked at the age range from age 34 to age 17, which is what we can look at on there. Mm -hmm. There was, can we go past 17? Is it to 13? It's 13 to 17. Okay. So it's 13 to 34. Mm -hmm. We can look at our numbers. It's, okay. If this movie was going to bring young people in and they were going to watch this movie and then they were going to go start seeking out the real Elvis story, like we've been told, then me and you should have gotten a spike, right? Right. I would think Did so. your numbers go up in that age yep. range. Do you want me to read them to you? Yeah, go ahead. This is my, my uh, numbers for the last 365 days on my Elvis YouTube channel. 13 to 17, 0.2% of an audience. 18 to 24, 4.1% watches Globe Trot and with Trey. 25 to 34, so my age range, 8.7%. 35 to 44, 12.8% of an audience. 45 to 54, 22.1% is the audience. 55 to 64 EPE, 30.1% is my audience. 65 and plus, now a lot of these people don't have accounts, 22.1% is the audience. So you can see what the audience is for Elvis. Oh, the my biggest goodness. part of the audience is older people in my age range. That's a reality. And I actually lost 0.1%. And look, I understand uh, an 18 year old kid not watching me, but they don't know that you're 35. They don't know that you're, you know, not 25. You know what I'm saying? Looking right. at you. So there's if this thing that they said was going to happen behind this movie and behind this cartoon really happened, we would have seen it in our numbers. They are lying to you about what happened with the younger kids, the older people. And there's some people that just blow my mind that are taken up for this movie and acting like we're crazy for for being against this stuff. Guys. I'm going to stand on the truth of history, even if it costs me something mm -hmm. every well, like, single time. Okay. So the movie premiered what? June, 2022, mm -hmm. April, 2022, my 18 to 24 age range watching was 16.4%. June after the movie. So we'll go to July. The movie hits in June, July, 2002, my 18 and 24 age range was 5.6%. So it actually dropped. From 16% to 5%. Yeah. And me and you are both around 12% from 34 to, to 14 or 13. So that's the audience. That's the yeah. audience. Uh, that's the audience of that age range with Elvis, even after the Elvis movie. And, and that's know, an old guy making videos and a young guy making videos so our percentage is almost exactly the same before the movie and after the movie. So those numbers don't lie. What they said the movie was going to do is not what it did. Mm -hmm. But you got to also imagine this, people, is you guys, the world is getting narratives. And what I mean by that is there's head honchos that are scheming and plotting and planning and they're throw, you know, they're they're making something that's not a reality a reality and make people believe to help numbers to help them out. Mm -hmm. And you know, the Elvis movie did that. Me and you have talked about that, and people believe. And, and a lot of them got the devil in them. So know. we got to go. We're running over, Trey. Thank y'all so much for listening to Wickwam. We will have another uh, podcast next week on a completely different subject. So. Thank y'all so much for listening and thank you for supporting us. I am the spy guy on YouTube. Trey is globetrotting with Trey on YouTube. Make sure you check our channels out. The links are down in the description area or just go there and search spy guy or globetrotting with Trey. Thank y'all so much for watching. Hey, thank you.